Hello and welcome back. So in this video, we'll talk about Bayesian image restoration. Uh, so far, we've looked at methods like linear filtering. We saw box car averaging. We also looked at bilateral filter, etc. There, uh, we have assumed some uh, prior knowledge about the noise in the image, right? Which is basically zero mean additive noise. Uh, expectation goes to zero, and we've expected that, especially in linear filtering. Um, we have some constraint on the image in the sense. We assume that it's locally constant, right? That's one uh, way where we uh, used averaging. So, other than that, we have not used any constraints. So, the in the probabilistic framework, which is the Bayesian image restoration framework, we are able to um, incorporate additional constraints on F. So, for instance, smoothness constraints on F. Okay. So. The idea here basically again for denoising is to determine an unknown function f from some observation g. So in this case the observation g is nothing but the noisy image itself. But it need not be in some problems for instance g can be just a bunch of features that are related to the picture or the problem at hand. Um, so for instance it can be used for segmentation, classification etc. Okay. So for the purposes of this uh, topic, so we assume that G and F are vectors, so which is what is given in block phase here, block phase letters G and F. They are assumed to be vectors, so we rasterize the image and so we have one big column vector. We will also refer to the individual elements of the vector as Fi and Gi. Okay. Um, so the idea is uh, to use base rule. So we will write down base rule for this estimation problem. Remember we are trying to estimate the denoised image F or the true ideal image f given the noisy observation g. So the probability of that which is sometimes referred to as the posterior probability is proportional to the likelihood p of g given f times the prior p of f. Okay. This p of g given f is basically called the data term. This is, uh, this, this is to make sure that you know um, that, that the, that the uh, image you estimate, the f you estimate is not too far from g. So it should be consistent with G. So it's called the data term. P of F is the prior knowledge about F independent of the observation G. So this is not something that G is giving. This P of F is something that you are imposing. For instance, it has to be smooth, etc. Okay. So given uh, this is the general framework for Bayesian image restoration. So people get clever about uh, you know making um, uh, mostly by uh, manipulating this P of F. This P of F is you know the prior term or your knowledge of f that you want to impose is sometimes you can think of it as a regularization term okay it's called in the context of optimization you can think of this as the regularization term p of g given f is nothing but you know what is the uh, what do you call the data fidelity term that whatever f you are estimating it should be consistent uh, with whatever you have observed that is uh, f is the denoid version of g that that should be meaningful okay um, the uh, the conditional probability p of g given f, which is the data term, um, is uh, is characterized by some noise, right? That's another thing. So you are already incorporating noise here. So you are saying that uh, g is a corrupted version of f, and uh, we are also make now making an assumption about the type of noise that is, and the type of noise you are assuming is that it is a zero mean Gaussian noise. So why do you call this the noise distribution? Because if you look at this expression. Uh, it's a Gaussian, but it's in this case, since G and F are vectors, we have written it in this form with sigma being the covariant matrix. But F minus G, you can you can say F minus G is some uh, epsilon, and so this becomes uh, this expression P of G given F uh, actually becomes um, you know uh, one over Z one exponential of um, I'll I'll leave out some of the uh, you know, normalization terms. So minus epsilon transpose uh, sigma epsilon. Okay, so this is just f minus g. It's basically that's that's the noise, right? That's the noise. At every point, that's the noise. So you're just modeling the noise here. So you're also and, and in the process, you're also saying what is the probability of g given a certain f? Observing g given a certain f because g is the noise noisy version. Uh, you, you are uh, this probability uh, distribution also defines you know what, what the noise is. Okay. The Z1 is a normalizing factor for Gaussian distribution. Now, let's assume that if you assume that all the pixels in the image are independent of each other, okay, 
all the pixels in the image are independent of each other and that is you can draw each pixel from this distribution independently and then they all have the same variation and the equation we saw earlier simplifies to the following p of g given f we can write it as 1 over z1 exponential of minus um, there is a half which I'll take inside so take outside here actually i, I equal to 0 to n minus 1 so n pixels um, f i minus g i squared by 2 sigma squared. So there is a summation in the exponent. So how did this happen? We are saying that all the pixels, uh, we treat all the pixels individual, uh, we, uh, independently of each other. So if you have an image, okay, the probability of getting that image, that noisy image g is nothing but the product of the probabilities of the observing the individual pixels, right? So, since this is an exponential distribution, the product adds up in the exponent, right? So, if you want to rewrite this, I will say product over i equal to 0 to n minus 1. What is the probability of observing the individual pixel? It is still an exponential distribution minus 1 by 2. In this case, f i minus g i square. Again, it is a sigma square, right? This is for a pixel i. There are n pixels, so for observing the entire image, you multiply the probabilities, assuming that all the pixels are independent, right? So given two uh, two pixel, two, so if you know this rule, uh, p of a and b together is p of a times p of b if a and b are independent events, right? So similarly, we can um, write this for the entire image, and this is once again the product adds up in the exponent, right? This is the exponent, so you can add up. So from here, you can get this expression okay the a priori probability is modeled by another exponential distribution so 1 over z2 it's not gaussian but it's just an exponential minus u of omega okay this u of omega is often referred to as a potential clique potential or i'll just simply say it potential okay so so now if you let me write this down again so that then we can we can um, write this. So, we, we are using G and F as vectors. Um, so, if we write it down in terms of individual pixel values, uh, what we can do, we can write down is that the probability of uh, observing G given F is the true image can be written as there is some normalizing constant, uh, the exponential and it's, it's the sum over all the pixels that is 1 equal to 0 to n minus 1 um, f i minus g i raised to 2 uh, by uh, 2 sigma square. Um, the probability p of f right we saw that the probability p of f is modeled as a uh, Uh, it's also an exponential distribution. We saw it. It's some other uh, normalization constant. It's exponential of minus u of w. Okay. So what is this u of w? Okay. This is often referred to as a clique potential. So clique potential is basically um, you, you are considering groups of pixels. Okay. Um, so, uh, you can consider a group of pixels and each of them can be called a, uh, also a clique and for each group of pixels, you have some, uh, you define some kind of spatial adjacency and, uh, and, well, and, each, and based on the spatial adjacency, you also define these potentials. So, for instance, one potential that is often used is u of omega. So, I will tell you what this is. u of omega is uh, some beta summation over k equal to k minus 1 u of i k okay so what is this where k is the number of cliques so cliques is you know given a neighborhood into how many ways can you split them into pairs three at a time four at a time etc right that's how you call a clique and if you take every clique okay um u k is the number of uh, pixels Right, uh, pixels in a clique K, which has the same intensity as center pixel I. So you can consider like a square neighborhood, three by three neighborhood, 
right and count let's say i'll use different color these these are this is the center uh, these are same maybe these are the same this let's, let's consider this whole thing as a click and maybe the others are slightly different it's so, right different values i'm just going to put a dot so you can count the number of pixels which have the same value as the center pixel now what this does is to enforce smoothness so you prefer images right that have uh, uh, you know in this case these you prefer images which have a, a very uh, a neighborhood small neighborhoods with a pixel values being almost the same okay that's the smoothness right that's that's what you're enforcing with this kind of a potential function right so this is in terms of probability so uh, if for uh, for uh, doing this you know it's it's uh, solving this problem is kind of hard because you see there are many arrangement of pixel values correct so and that that becomes much much harder to do so one way you would solve this problem is you would uh, Uh, you you would actually formulate this uh, p of f given g, which is what we saw there, right? So then, at the beginning, just try to write down, you know, how we are going to calculate f. That's more important, right? So calculation of f. So we will write it in uh, you know individual terms. So p of g given f can be rewritten as this normalization constant time exponential minus I equal to zero to n minus. One. This is the total number of pixels. N is the total number of pixels. F i minus g i squared by sigma squared. Okay. So, in case you are wondering how we got here, how what this assume is we what this assumes is that we treat each pixel as an independent um, random variable, right? In the sense, um, so if we if we choose a pixel, it is chosen with a certain probability from this distribution. You can think of it that. the other way of looking at this is that the noise is gaussian distributed so that's why there's a summation in the exponent so uh, basically if you if you start from the uh, exponential distribution and you you are uh, uh, modeling the entire image with this so the probability of observing the first pixel will be times you know if you if you use uh, just this distribution it will be f1 minus g1 squared by sigma squared okay times so the the probability of observing the entire image is nothing but the product of observing the entire you know product of observing each of the individual pixels so this is for pixel 1 similarly you can write this for um, one half let's say uh, again i'm going to not consider the uh, other factors f2 minus g2 squared by sigma squared and of course we assume sigma is the same for all of the pixels like that you can go all the way to exponential um, sorry there is minus sign here minus uh, f n minus g of n squared in this case n minus 1 squared by sigma squared so it's just a multiplication right for all the, of all each for each one for each pixel you have a term like this and when you multiply you sum in the exponent so that's why you get here so for for this you can ignore this product If you write, if you want to write this particular expression in a, in a, you know in a compact form, you would write it in this way. So you would say product i equal to zero to n minus one. I put the one over z outside. Okay, um, exponential minus one by two. F i minus g i squared by sigma squared. Okay, this is the probability. This that this is p of g given f. If we go pixel by pixel, right? So we take every pixel for every pixel i. We we estimate this probability, and then the probability for all the pixels put together, given that they are independently drawn, is just the product for each of the individual probabilities, right? So this is how we estimate. This number and if since these are exponent, the product sums up in the exponent, so we get this expression. Okay, I hope that much is clear, right? Um, so, so the fundamental assumption here is that the probabilities of the individual pixels are independent or independent of each other, and they all have the same variance sigma square. Okay, and if you think of it that way, then uh, this this simplification can happen.
So <coughs> this summation the exponent, right? We add one more here. You um, okay? So how do we um, um, you know define this p of f? So p of f, as I stated, let me rewrite this one over some normalization constant time exponential of minus u of omega. Omega is actually written. U of omega is now can be written as um, beta times k equal to 0 to some capital K minus 1 u of i k. Okay. Where k is the number of cliques. So cliques are basically how you uh, in, the, in the context of this problem. Um, let me rewrite this c l i q u e s. So in the context of this problem cliques are basically the neighborhood of every pixel. Center pixel i. Okay, if i is the center pixel. You are looking at the neighborhood of that center pixel and you can choose different kinds of neighborhoods. Okay. And each neighborhood you would call that as a clique. So in this particular case uik is the number of pixels in a clique k which has the same intensity value as the center pixel. It's the same as center pixel. Okay. So if the neighborhood is the same then the potential is increasing. Is always increasing. Okay. So consequently, you will have very strong, this, this will lead to very strong edges because if you look at it, if there is a, a neighborhood which straddles an edge, right. So before that, let me draw some uh, pictures so that you can appreciate this better. Let me just use a different color. So, so let's say a 3 by 3 neighborhood, right. So if there is an edge here, very strong edge going through here having different uh, pixel values, okay. And this is the center pixel, right? This this one is the center pixel. Now the edge will have a considerably different value than the center pixel, correct? So then u u will be lower. So this will be low. If there's an edge around the center pixel, right? U will be low. So consequently, p of f f will be higher. So think of it that way, right? So having this enforcing this constraint of you know having an increased potential whenever the cliques of a center pixel have the same value as the center pixel leads to very strong edges. Okay. So the other uh, assumption is this Markovian assumption or Markovian property wherein you have for an image you will have you know there are n pixels. So each of them will have a neighborhood. So you will assume that each of those neighborhoods are independent of each other. Just as we assume that each pixel is independent of each other when we do the we did the uh, data fidelity term or the uh, likelihood term. We assume for the prior term that each of these neighborhoods, the way we treat them are independent of each other. So then we can still, when we consider each of the central pixels and we look at the entire probability, prior probability, we just multiply that as well. Okay. So taking that all into account, we can rewrite, uh, we can rewrite this uh, uh, P of F given G as, change color, it's the, uh, we can write it in this form. I will I'll write down the last, uh, the, the final form so that you know you can you can work through the uh, algebra yourself is this n minus 1 yes. by 2 sigma squared. So minus um, this again there is a minus n uh, here. I might have uh, done a mistake on the minus sign but let me correct it after I write it down. Okay. So we can close this. Uh, there are two. We have a small packet here. So um, the maximize we want to maximize this probability, right? So that's the probability of of the true image f given the noisy image g. That's the posterior, and we want to maximize this. And in order to do that, we wrote it down as a uh, product of the uh, data term or the likelihood term. So um, and and the prior, which now acts as a regularizer. Okay. So now we add we added the had that added the prior so that um, the um, the, the probability of getting very strong edges are there. Okay, so the images will have very strong edges. Um, the maximization of this probability um, actually means minimization of this exponent. So minimization of the exponent. So i equal to zero to n minus one 
So we'll have the f i minus d i squared by 2 sigma squared, right? Minus beta. This beta are just uh, some hyperparameters that you will have to choose to make it work for the particular problem. Okay. So this is the loss function eventually that we are trying to optimize. So, yeah, so we have now down come, uh, made this into an optimization problem. There are many techniques for doing this optimization. Uh, one is called simulated annealing. Okay. Um, the other one is called ICM technique. There is also a mean field annealing. The reason why there are these so many techniques is because this optimization problem is hard. So, for instance, that's primarily comes from here. Um, and of course, the size of the problem is also big, right? Because we are trying to estimate fi, pixel by pixel. Okay, and also this arrangement. So, we are looking at clique potentials where we are just counting the number of pixels with similar values, right? So, but then the arrangement can be the deadly size to so many arrangements, okay? And also depends on you know what the dynamic range of, of your image is. So the number of images here increases exponentially. So that way, uh, you know the problem is harder to solve. We have to find the correct arrangement that that satisfies this loss function. So there are many of these strategies are so called greedy strategies to, to estimate this f i. So remember, we want to estimate f i. So that's the problem here. And uh, we have started off from the Bayesian framework, figured out uh, you know a, a data fertility term or the likelihood term. We model this as, as a Gaussian. Of course, it's the same as modeling the noise as Gaussian. And we then uh, had a prior. We imposed a prior, which is the same as regularization. Prior, of course, we can do lots of tricks there. That's where people work on so what kind of prior uh, will lead to a certain type of image. People uh, work with that. So you choose a prior and then you write down the expression of P of F given G, which is basically trying to maximize this probability, right, for a certain image F. And when you do that in that process, you will end up with this optimi with this optimization problem. Okay, that's what people typically solve in this line of research. Once again, I have presented this as some kind of pre-processing technique, but it's not exactly pre-processing, correct? There are so many, um, uh, you know, uh, people working on this as a research problem. It's been around for a long time, it's a difficult problem to solve. So this uh, kind of, uh, you know, Bayesian framework for uh, solving these problems is generally a difficult problem to solve and people have worked on this quite a bit. So this is a field of research by itself. Um, but then, you know, if you are going to denoise pictures before using them downstream for some other processing, uh, maybe this is one method you can consider. Okay. So this ends uh, this week's lectures on basic image processing techniques. Thank you.